Welcome to my anime recap channel. In this video, I will be recapping the anime series, Tomo Chan is a Girl. After entering high school, Tomo confesses her love to June, her childhood friend. June, who thinks Tomo is a boy, doesn't understand her confession of love and responds with, I love you too, buddy. Disappointed at the result, Tomo complains about being treated as a boy and not as a girl. Tomo and June have been living together as neighbors since childhood. They would play with each other and hang out together. However, while growing up, they went to different elementary schools, but in middle school, when he met her again, June began to believe that Tomo was a boy, and this was the first time she got the treatment of a boy. While going to high school, June smacked Tomo's but without thinking a bit. To her embarrassment and frustration, Tomo hits him with the elbow in the ribs, also stating she knows karate too. Arriving at her classroom, Tomo seeks help from her best friend Gundo. Gundo recalls that she only plays games that boys play and fights with kids from other schools, even in kindergarten. Whenever Gundo asked her to play house or dolls with her, she rejected her every time. So, at this point, she might well become a real boy, while asking for help again. Gundo states Tomo has many problems, one of which is the way she talks. Gundo tells her to try softening her tone a bit and being more polite and less blunt. After listening to her advice, Tomo begins to talk louder, and June states that she's talking like an old man. Angry at his remarks, Tomo asks what his problem is and decides to settle this issue with a fight. When June grabs her collar, her girly things flash out. Embarrassed, Tomo asks for a timeout, but June doesn't listen, and they both begin their fight. Arriving at home, Tomo's father asks what happened to her face. She replies that she had a fight with June, which she lost. Her father calls her a wuss to the Aizawa style, and they both begin to argue while Tomo's mother enjoys their argument while cooking for them. Next morning, June asked for forgiveness, and she also hit her with a punch too. Not responding a bit, June begins to tease her while touching her waist, but gets punched in the face. June states he already apologized many times, so don't be mad, life is boring when she's not around. And he can't stand having her ignore him for another second. Recalling his words, Tomo states he's always like this the day they fight, but tells him she won't ignore him. Back to buddies again, they gave each other a fist pump and went to high school. On the rooftop. Gundo asks Tomo why she and June always come to school together, hang out throughout the school together, and then why she spends her lunch break with her. Tomo replies that when a girl and a boy go to lunch together, they feel like they are dating, and she does not want to feel that way. Angry at her statement, Gundo runs away, saying she needs to eat with June. While eating besides June, Tomo reveals the reason behind not eating with the trio is that these two hate each other's guts. While eating her fried chicken, June asks for one, which she happily gives him. But she gets embarrassed when June holds her hand while eating the fried chicken with her chopsticks. In the middle of the school, a guy named Tanabe arrives and asks June how far he's gotten with Tomo, stating the intense things sports guys and girls do together. Thinking as a karate practice they usually do at her home, June tells Tanabe they have been doing this since they were kids. To his surprise, Tanabe states there is no doubt she has an amazing body, thinking of her flying kicks. June replies that Tomo's got good feet and is good at using them too. To his surprise, Gundo, who is listening to all this, immediately heads to Tomo and tells her everything. Infuriated at his words, Tomo beats the hell out of June. Later, Gundo stops Tanabe telling him June and Tomo are not dating, and June doesn't even see Tomo as a girl. Tanabe thinks their relationship is interesting, and how can he give them a push? Angry, Gundo states she's known them since childhood and she's the only one who's allowed to play with them. Later that day, it starts raining heavily. Gundo and June recall they did not bring an umbrella. Meeting with each other, Gundo recalls how she and Tomo used to play together, but now June hates her without reason. June states she always came up with extreme pranks, but whenever the grown-ups yelled at them, she was nowhere to be found and would always run away. In order to instill insecurity, Gundo asks himself how he would feel if Tomo were to get a boyfriend and leaves June for him. This leads to June pushing her towards the hall and into the rain. Suddenly, Tomo arrives with an umbrella, 
Instead of June, Tomo asks Gundo to go with her under her umbrella, but she declines and makes her go with June. As they are walking back home, Tomo tries to stand a little away from June and ends up getting wet. When June asks why she is staying away from him, Tomo recalls that she came from the bathroom and smells sweaty. June sniffs her and recalls that she's smelling kind of nice. Embarrassed at this, Tomo leaves June and runs away into the rain. Arriving at Tomo's location, June's eyes fall on her wet clothes, and he ends up noticing Tomo's bra and immediately runs away. At the boys' karate club, Tomo is sparring with his teammate Misaki. Misaki recalls how she's amazing, sharp, light on her feet, and stronger than anyone else in the karate club. After getting knocked out, Tomo apologizes to him, but Misaki appears to not mind at all. He asks why she joined the boys club, to which Tomo replies that all the other students in her family's dojo are guys, so she's used to it, but in her first match in the girls club, she's gotten carried away and ends up knocking out most of the new students. She also states she joined the girls club for a change of surroundings, but before she knew it, she was surrounded by guys again and believes she's a failure as a girl. However, Misaki says she's a very charming girl. Feeling happy, Tomo states this is the first time a guy has acknowledged her as a girl. She asked Misaki what seemed girly about her. Misaki states she has all kinds of charms, but she needs to emphasize one thing. She is plenty charming just the way she is and has more confidence in herself. Outside the boys' karate club, two girls stop Tomo and Misaki as they talk to each other. At the school, Gundo confronts June, revealing that Tomo has a guy friend in the karate club. Jealous. June touches her hair and throws her ponytail. June asks Tomo about a friend in the karate club, and Tomo states that his name is Misaki and that he is the club captain, showing his picture to June, but June thinks he's a girl. June asks Tomo how she would feel if Gundo got a boyfriend and stopped talking to her. Tomo states Gundo wouldn't do that ever, and if she does, she'll be a little lonely. While drinking a soda, Tomo is confronted by two girls from Class B who have previously been stalking her and Misaki outside the boys' karate club. They introduce themselves as Mifun and Agua, respectively, and ask Tomo to meet them after school, behind the gym. Tomo sees this as a threat and tries to intimidate the two by inquiring about what they are up to and even destroying a soda can to threaten them. The trick appears to work really well as the duo asks their classmates about Tomo. One of the girls explains that she was matched up with her in the karate club and that her strength is not human. She also states Tomo moved to the boys club and still hasn't lost a match yet. Fighting with Tomo means a cruel death. Hearing about Tomo, the others get frightened as well, and Agawa states they need to apologize to her before she can kill them. Tomo tells Gundo about Class B's girls and opens up about her plan to fight the two of them. Gundo calmly reminds her that this is not how high school girls communicate, but dissuades her friends from fighting and instead asks her to tell her if they cross the line. She also tells her that if they say anything too out of line, she will crush them socially. Later, Tomo meets Mifun and Agawa behind the gym. The two are terrified of her as they see Tomo getting ready for a fight. They both somehow gather some courage and tell her that they like Misaki, and they saw her talking with him outside the boys' karate club. Tomo completely misunderstood the situation and thinks they only come to her because they need her love advice. She recalls that she never thought her dream of giving someone love advice would come true. She tells them that if they want to get closer to Misaki, the first thing they should do is be her friends. Feeling reassured, Tomo tells Gundo she feels like one of the girls now. Gundo asks why people called her the na- in middle school, and Tomo adds she does not know. Suddenly, June arrives, grabs her from behind, and leaves the classroom while going back home from school. Tomo and June take a bus. June saves a seat and asks Tomo to sit beside him, to which she happily agrees. While sitting next to him, Tomo feels embarrassed and shy about sitting next to him and decides to remain standing. Tomo wonders how June doesn't have any clue about her being a girl, and even he doesn't treat her like one. She also states that she is the only one who's all hyped up, not June, and that sitting next to him makes her heart pound and even makes her look stupid. Standing inside the bus, Tomo states that the bus is getting very crowded and a lot of people are coming in. 
Suddenly, an old man approaches her from behind and starts touching her body inappropriately. Tomo is surprised and shocked to see a man noticing her as a girl, but she can't do anything about the situation. She wants to slug him right now but realizes that if she does so, June will know about this. The discomfort on her face begins to show as she feels like she is about to cry, realizing the situation. June stands up and takes a stand for his friend, grabbing the old man by his collar and handing him over to police. He asks the police officer to lock him up for life so he can never do the same thing to any other girl. While on their way to school, Tomo thinks that he's never seen June like this before and feels like he's actually treating her like a girl. Suddenly, June asks Tomo to stop wearing skirts, which surprises Tomo. When telling about the incident to Gundo, Gundo asks Tomo if she is okay and if the old man hurt him. But Tomo states that he just touched him and June took care of the situation. She also tells Gundo how June told her to stop wearing skirts and try to wear slacks, which high school also allows. When Tomo asks about the reason behind it, June states that it looks wrong on her and he can't even relax when she is wearing it. Hearing this, Tomo gets angry and hits him with a powerful punch. Gundo states that the reason behind June's sudden behavior is that he does not want her to get groped again. After that, they both end up having a discussion about skirts. Gundo asks Tomo why she's wearing a short skirt, to which she states that she can move her legs around easier with this. Laughing at her choice, Gundo states that skirts are not meant for girls like her and asks her to take off her skirts while coming to school. Embarrassed, Tomo rejects her advice and calls her a pervy, to which Gundo states that the only way to wear a skirt is with nothing but your panties underneath. Tomo replies by calling her a liar and states that if she flicked her skirt, people would see everything, but Gundo states that this is the fashion for girls and today she is only wearing panties under her. She also tells her that this could potentially draw June towards Tomo and help her see her as a girl at least. After talking with Tomo, Gundo meets June and tries to talk with him about Tomo, but he simply walks away. Suddenly, Gundo tells June that Tomo wants to walk home and is waiting for him. Hearing this, June quickly comes back and is glad to hear that Tomo is not mad at him anymore. Seeing Tomo in shorts, June gets shocked and slaps his face, thinking that he saw nothing. While walking back to home, Tomo tries to talk with him about their fight, but June simply turns his face and begins to ignore her. Tomo wonders why June is acting so strange and being such a pain. They enter the bus again and see that it is crowded with people, activating his June vision. June thinks that all boys are looking at Tomo and her shorts, so he activates his angry mode and begins covering her body. While reaching near their house, Tomo wonders why June is ignoring her and asks the reason behind it, but a gust comes and reveals her panties to June, to which he falls unconscious while seeing them. After waking up, June asks for forgiveness and tells Tomo that being best friends does not give him the right to tell her what to wear, but he still feels that it's not right to wear stuff that makes her and him embarrass. Looking at his face, Tomo feels happy to see him looking after her, and she even thinks that this is the first time she has seen him like this. The next day at school, Gundo asks Tomo what happened after she took her shorts off, to which Tomo states that it went horribly and she will never dress like that again. Later, Gundo asks June why he hasn't talked to Tomo all day and why he looks so sad, to which June simply flicks her head and leaves the room. He sees Tomo and greets her the way they usually do and asks her to have lunch together. Seeing this, Gundo thinks that June is just acting at the moment and ignoring the fact that Tomo is a girl, and wonders how long he will keep this up. The following day at school, a girl walks towards the classroom, followed by some boys who ask her to carry her bag, but the girl totally rejects it. Entering the classroom, boys surround the same girl, revealed to be Carol Olston, who is popular because of her good looks. Seeing her crowded with boys, Tomo asks Gundo if she's popular with the boys, that means she is the girliest. Gundo states that she's not just popular for her looks, but also the only English student in the classroom, and even has a good personality that hits the guys right in their instincts. Thinking about her words, Tomo wonders if she make her friend, will she be able to know about the girly stuff? Suddenly, she is approached by Misaki, who is also walking with Carol. 
she asks Misaki what they are doing together, to which Misaki states that she is his cousin and they have been friends since childhood. But Carol states that they are engaged and have already gotten married three times. Shocked, Tomo states that how is that possible? But Misaki corrects her by stating that she is only kidding and just teasing her. Misaki asks Tomo if she is friends with Carol, to which she states that we are in the same class but never talk to each other. Carol teases her by stating that she's not interested in the boys in our class. Shocked, Tomo angrily states that she's not a boy but a girl. Calming her down with his innocent gesture, Carol sees that Misaki is probably attracted to Tomo, so she starts seeing her as an enemy. Even putting her finger on her cheek and calling her an idiot, she calls her an idiot again and again in the classroom, in the cafeteria, and also in the gym. Gundo asks Tomo what this is all about, to which she replies that she only talked to her once, and at the moment, she was with her fiancé, Misaki. Hearing this, Gundo asks Tomo if she has any idea why she picked a fight with her, to which Tomo states that she does not remember doing anything, and Gundo calls her an idiot too. In the classroom, Carol asked Gundo to tell her about Tomo. Gundo states that she sees Tomo as her enemy and that Tomo is her best friend, and she tells her to ask someone else about this. Carol states that if she helps her in this situation, she will treat her with a tasty cake. Agreeing to this, Gundo asks what she wants to know, to which Carol states that she wants to know how she can defeat Tomo. Thinking about June, Gundo tells her that there is someone else who can help her more than her. She goes to the boys' locker room and asks June for his help. She tells him that there is someone in the classroom whom she wants to defeat, and she wants June to teach her how to fight. Agreeing to her request, June tries to train her but fails. Seeing them together, Tomo asked June angry what they were doing. Seeing her fight with June, Carol realizes that Tomo is not into Misaki. After realizing that she does not have to worry about Tomo, Carol immediately gives up on trying to be her enemy. Later, when she goes out to eat some dessert with Gundo, she asks her if the two of them can be called friends now. Interestingly, Gundo advises her to talk to Tomo if she is looking for friends, since she knows that she will be more than happy to be one. Carol listens to her advice and meets Tomo the following day at school. Tomo had expected to have some problems with her and was quite defensive at first, but she dropped her guard immediately upon being asked by Carol to be her friend. Interestingly, Carol has always wanted to become friends with girls her age, but despite her best efforts, she never really had much success and was often talked about badly behind her back. This appears to have hurt Carol for years, but she has remained as gracious and kind as she could. But when she extended her hand to be friends with Tomo, she was quite shocked that the girl, who was just super defensive and did not see her in a positive light, immediately changed her tune and became her friend. This made Tomo seem like an angel to Carol, who was glad she now had another friend. After this, even Misuzu agreed to be her buddy. After Tomo becomes friends with Carol, she talks to June about it. He reveals that she and Gundu are quite popular with the boys in the school. This does not shock Tomo, who feels that they are quite girly, which could potentially be a reason for their popularity. That's when June ends up saying that it's not his place to say something like that about Gundu. When Tomo asks whether he likes her, June is quick to decline. However, he then accidentally spills the beans that he dated Gundo for a while when they were in middle school. Immediately after revealing the secret, June realizes that he has made a huge mistake and notices that Tomo is quite shocked. After learning that June dated her best friend, Tomo wonders why they kept this from her. As best friends don't do stuff like that. She immediately confronts Gundu and angrily asks what happened between her and June in middle school. She also tells Gundu that she already knows she has feelings for him but still she hides this from her. Gundu tells her that they didn't tell her because they wanted to forget this. Since he spilled the bean, she has no choice but to reveal everything. She then reveals that their relationship lasted for only three days, so she never had the time to say anything. Further revealing about their relationship, Gunda tells her that in the second year of middle school, June asked her out and she happily accepted it, as he was the hottest guy in the middle school and every girl wanted to be his girlfriend. She tells her that on the first day of their date, June invited her to go cycling with him, and they repeated that exchange for two hours while traveling 40 kilometers one way. 
After reaching their destination, June only showed her the beautiful view of green trees, which annoyed her. He also drags her to the same place the next day, and due to this, she loses 5 kilograms in 2 days. When asked what went wrong on the date, Gundu reveals that she had hit her limit both physically and mentally, and when she approached June to call it quits, June suddenly told her that they were not a good match for each other and decided to quit with her. Describing this as a permanent black mark on her life, Gundu states that due to this, she will never forgive him. Tomo then asked when they were going out, did they kiss or do anything with each other? Gundu reveals that they only called each other by their names and held hands while walking to and from school. Hearing this, Tomo is relieved to learn that the two of them do not have any feelings for each other anymore. Later, while walking back to home, Tomo asks June about his relationship with Gundu and if he still has feelings for her. June tells her that their relationship was only for a couple of days, and now he hates her. Tomo then asks if there is someone he likes now, to which June simply denies it. The next day, while going to school, Misaki meets Tomo and June. Seeing him in front of him, June thought that Misaki was a girl, but seeing his boy's uniform, he corrects his mistake and states him as a boy. When Tomo introduces him to Misaki, he behaves very rudely, even hitting him with a chop on the head. Angered, Tomo hit him with a punch and asked him to behave properly with Misaki, to which he agreed. While introducing himself to Misaki, June asks for a karate match and states that he will crush him with every ounce of his strength, to which Misaki gets more horrified. Later, June asks Tomo why she is so close to Misaki as there are so many girls in the club room with whom she can be friends. Tomo corrects his mistake and reveals that she's not in the girls' club, but in the boys' club. After the class is over, June asks Tomo to go home with him, but she denies him, stating that she promised to have tea with Gundu and Carol. On his way home, June accidentally bumps into Misaki while waiting for the bus. June thinks about Tomo's words, who asked him to behave properly the next time he sees Misaki. As he begins to do so, Misaki asks why he didn't join the boys' karate club, to which he reveals that he cannot beat Tomo and that the other reason is that he doesn't want to lose. Misaki tells him that Tomo had told him the same thing about him, as she also can't defeat him. June reveals that there are some restrictions in her dad's dojo, and if they had a real match, she would definitely beat him. June further reveals that they often fight with each other and he even defeats her with punches, since he is a guy and she is a girl. Angered, Misaki tells him that Tomo is a girl and how can he do that to a girl, to which Jun states that the problem is not him but Tomo herself, who always comes to him attacking first. Jun also tells him that he always wanted to be like her since she is so cool, and Misaki also agrees. Thinking about how much he told him about Tomo, June angrily states that if he ever tells Tomo about this, he will kill him, to which Misaki obliges. The next day, Misaki tells Tomo about his meeting with June, but states that he is a good guy and was pretty nice to him. Happy to hear this, Tomo reveals that June was a good guy, but he began acting weirdly in their second year of middle school, and when she tried to introduce him to her guy friends. He always scared them away, which is why he has no friends. Since Misaki understood him, she thanks him for this and went out from the club room. On their way, she also tells him that despite the fact that she is a girl, June still considers her a boy. Before revealing that June already knows Tomo is a girl, June suddenly arrives and stops him from doing that, scaring him furthermore. At the restaurant, Mifun and Ogawa think about Tomo and wonder why, despite being a girl, she looks boyish. Suddenly, Tomo arrives and says hello to both of them, but they both begin to cry seeing her in the boy's pants. Despite her desire to spend some time with them, the duo does not wish so and immediately runs away. As Gunda sits down with Tomo to talk about mundane things. She learns that June has been asking Tomo to hang out with him for quite some time. However, Tomo keeps declining because she feels weirdly self-conscious in those situations. Gundu then tells her that if she keeps rejecting him again and again, he will end up with someone else. She also tells her to behave like other girls and invites him to go shopping for clothes or something else. And in this way, he might see something girly in her. 
thinking about Gundu's words, who told her that since she kept him waiting in place for so long, when asked, he will come running to her wagging his tail. She then asks June if he's free and wants to hang out with her, to which he happily agrees, acting like the dog that Gundu predicted. After that, Tomo informs Gundu and Carol about their plans. Gundu states that she was accurate about the reaction and tells Tomo that they are not just hanging out but that it is in fact a date. Shocked, Tomo states that she wants to go on a date but only boys like clothes. Carol tells her that boys' clothes will make her look like a joke and their date will be ruined. Since she always dresses too masculinely, Gundu and Carol then accompany her to the market so that they can buy her a new dress for the big day. Wondering about what kind of clothes they choose, Gundu starts with boyish, as she knows that Tomo has been dressing a certain way for a long time and making too many changes in a single day will only make June suspicious. Therefore, they go for clothes that are boyish but also have some sort of girlish touch to them. They also buy her white sneakers as they think they will look good on her. After the shopping, Tomo thanks both of them for helping her out. But Gunda tells her that she only did what she could as her best friend, and wants her to tell every last detail of everything that happens on their date, to which Tomo happily agrees. Later, when Tomo meets June, he notices that she does look slightly different just as Gundu and Carol had planned. Unfortunately, the date did not go as Tomo had expected. The duo first went to a baseball club, where they play indoor baseball with each other. Following this, they visit the bowling arcade. Tomo thinks that they are following the same plan as they used to do in their childhood and wants to get out of this. As things are not going her way, she asks June to try something different and goes to karaoke, but ends up alone in a small dark room. Embarrassed, Tomo thinks that a place like this should have been louder and busier, but she is still alone with June. When he asked if she was going to sing, Tomo responded angrily that she did not know how to sing and had only come to this place because he had agreed to come here. June reveals that he only came to this place because she wanted to come here, further telling her that when they were kids, she always wanted to do reckless things and let him coerce her into going along. At first, he was scared of doing those things, but when he tried doing what she asked, it was always fun, so he always followed her. Hearing this, Tomo thinks that he only came along to have fun and not for a date. Not wanting to ruin their fun, she immediately gets up and begins to sing, as she usually never sings in front of others. Listening to this, June not only laughs at her but also records a video of her. The next day, Tomo tells her friends that when June was not willing to sing, so she sang children's songs for three hours, and after that, they went home, even revealing that she will die from embarrassment as June also shot a video of her. Hearing this, Gundu and Carol went to June and asked him to show them Tomo's video, but Tomo angrily lured them away. As June watches her singing video again, he thinks that there is something different about her look but wonders what it is. While going to school, Tanabe approaches Gundo and says good morning to her, but she appears to not even notice who he is. Shocked, he tells June that he has hardly seen Gundo smile. Ellis, Tanabe wonders that since they were childhood friends, their experiences must be different than his, but the reality is different than his thoughts, as Gundo is always mean-spirited to June. June asks the same question to Tomo, who also states that she never saw her smile but begins to wonder if they both like each other. Tanabe, who realizes that she hardly ever smiles, tries to make her blush with his funny face, but she horrifies him with his sharp pencil, stating that if he does not stop, she will put the pencil on his cheek. As he begins to talk again, she takes his face and tells him to leave. While walking out of the class, he came across Carol, who also had tape on her face. Shocked, Tomo asks Carol what is going on, to which she explains that she tried to kiss Gundo on her cheek but ends up having her face taped by her. Later that day, Tanabe asks Gundo what will he do to make her smile. Noticing that he likes her, Gundo tells him to stop fooling around and approach her seriously, as this is the only way she can show him smiling. Tomo tells Gundo about June, who was talking about her smile, and asks if she likes him, to which she confirms, further explaining that June always remains serious all the time, even laughing and goofing around Tomo, and she likes these qualities in him. 
Later, Tomo notices the girls becoming friendly enough to hug and be close to one another and wants to do it too. Gundo, noticing this, asks her if she likes girls, but Tomo denies this, stating that she just wants to hug and hold hands like friends do. Gundo tells her that she interacts strangely with other girls, which Tomo confirms, stating that whenever she tries to pursue her friends and puts an arm on their shoulders, they begin to act being childhood friends with Gundo, as their mothers were too, and proposes the idea of hugging her, even stating that she won't hurt her. Unfortunately, Gundo does not like the idea and ignores her. Later quest, as they begin hugging each other, Tomo feels something strange and realizes how a girl feels like. She tells Gundo about this, who tells her that Carol is special. Wondering about if Carol is special, then what are other girls like? She hugs Mifune and Ogawa and states that they also smells like girls too, to which they both get embarrassed and wonder what's going on. Later that day, as Carol hugs her again and again, Tomo wonders why Gundo is grumpy today, and they both follow her. Carol asks Tomo about Gundo and what's going on with her, to which Tomo reveals, still not understanding why she is angry, Tomo tells her that it must be because of her, as she wanted to hug her. Hearing this, Carol thinks that it must be her fault and goes to meet Gundo, slamming her head into the class table and apologizing for her earlier behavior, but Gundo forgives her. She then approaches Tomo, apologizes for her rude behavior towards her, and even asks her to try the hugging stuff on her. Hearing this, Tomo has, but Gundo reveals that June always gets touchy and clingy with her, and there is no reason he will feel weird about this. Determined, Tomo follows June and prepares to hug him. As she does it, June pushes her away, stating that they are in high school now and she can't do stuff like that. Angered, Tomo tells him that he always does stuff like this to her, but June ignores her, stating that it's fine when he does that, but not for her, to which he gets punched by her. The next day, Tomo is sleeping in her bed. Suddenly, June enters her bedroom and asks her to wake up. As she wakes up, she is horrified to see June in her bedroom and begins to beat him up. Suddenly, as they begin to eat breakfast, Tomo makes a fish fried rice dish for him, which he likes so much. When asked why Mr. Aizawa is not joining them, Akemi reveals that Mr. Aizawa always eats and sleeps in his dojo and never comes to their room. Angered, Akemi tells him that at, Tomo tells June that her father is always like that in front of her mother, calling it lame. June tells her that a guy acting lovesick for a girl is not lame, as it means he loves her more than anything. June, as in the lunch break at the school, Carol takes Gundo to the terrace in order to get some advice on her love life. Suddenly, Misaki arrives and says hello to both of them. He then thanks her for taking care of Carol. He recalls that Carol is a little odd, but she's a very nice girl whom he considers his little sister. Carol, her clothes. Misaki dusts them away without even realizing that he is touching her in an inappropriate manner. After he leaves, Gundo tells Carol that he understands that her problem is quite similar to Tomo since Misaki does see her as a girl. For now, all she tells her to do is take life more seriously. Later, when Carol, Gundo, and Tomo are having a private conversation in the class, they are approached by Mifune, who wants to talk to Tomo, whom she met at a mixer. The boy is the leader of the notorious gang and is known for being a philanderer. He hits on all kinds of girls romantically and is never truly interested in dating anyone. Apparently, any girl who turns him down gets bullied to hell and back. Angered, Tomo asked Ogawa not to worry as she would take care of this problem. Ogawa, who is really concerned, tells Tomo that she just wants her to accompany her when she meets this guy later and turn his offer down. So Tomo goes with Ogawa and Mifune to offer the two of them all her support. When the notorious philanderer finally shows up, Tomo stands in front so that her friends feel confident. She informs him that her friend Ogawa is not interested in him and asks him to leave her alone. The boy shamelessly calls Tomo a giant and then argues he only approached Ogawa because he thought she was easy. Tomo, listening to his inconsiderate and shallow comments, gets infuriated and walks away. The same day, the boy meets some of his friends and plans to attack Tomo. June, who was passing this way, hears the boys talking ill of Tomo, gets angry, and kicks the leader in the gut. 
As they prepare to attack Jun, he tells them to remember his name well, looking for Jun. Tomo is suddenly approached by the leader and his friends, who are so brutally beaten up that they bend to their knees and apologize to Tomo for their rude behavior. After that, while walking towards the home, Tomo tells Jun about all this, who remains Silene and not reveal that he was the one who stood up for her and even beat those notorious gang members. Seeing his face beat up, Tomo asks what happened, to which he states that he fell over. Hearing this, Tomo tells him to go to her house as she will treat him with her favorite. One day, Carol extended an invitation for the two of them to come over to her house and spend some leisure time together. Despite being caught off guard, Tomo and Gundu agreed and headed to the address Carol had given them. Upon arriving, they were greeted by Carol's mother, who welcomed them into the luxurious property. Carol was eagerly waiting for her friends, her eyes lighting up as soon as she saw them. The three of them headed to Carol's room, and Tomo was taken aback by its grandeur, asking Carol in amazement if she was a princess. Meanwhile, Gundu remained unimpressed and reserved, as was her nature. Carol pulled out some old pictures from her childhood, and Tomo couldn't believe that Carol had not changed much over the years. They then played a game of Othello, with Carol easily defeating both of her friends. Despite Gundu having some prior experience with the game, she was unable to put up much of a challenge. The three friends spent an enjoyable time together and got to know Carol's mother better. At school, June approached Tomo with excitement in his eyes, revealing that he had finally acquired the video game that had been the topic of their recent conversations. He proposed a plan for an evening gaming session and offered for Tomo to spend the night at his place since there was no school the next day. Initially, Tomo was taken aback by the thought of being alone with June overnight, but after seeking advice from her friends Gundu and Carol, she decided to take him up on his offer. Upon arriving home, Tomo nervously asked for her parents' permission to stay at June's house, but to her surprise, they didn't have any objections. That evening, Tomo made her way to June's house, and was surprised to learn that they would be home alone, as June's mother was away for the night. As Tomo settles into June's home for the evening, she decides to indulge in a warm bath before they begin their gaming session. The relaxing soak makes her a bit self-conscious, but as they start playing video games, she gradually becomes more relaxed and comfortable. Despite their eagerness to stay up late into the night, they find themselves unable to keep their eyes open. As June falls asleep, Tomo takes the opportunity to take a closer look at his face, only to find herself being hugged in his sleep. The next morning, they are both slightly embarrassed by the close proximity they shared throughout the night and try to avoid each other's gaze as much as possible. One regular day, Tomo is caught off guard when she finds out that the midterms are just around the corner, the next day to be exact. When she approaches her classmates, Carol and Gundu, for insight, she realizes they're already ahead of the game, having not forgotten about the impending exams. To help Tomo prepare, Gundu invites her over to her house that evening. But to Tomo's surprise, June also offers to lend a hand in her studies. Gundu quickly reminds him of his tendency to rank around 30 in class, whereas she consistently tops the charts. Though Tomo is used to seeking June's company, this time it's clear that Gundu is more focused on her friend's academic success than her love life. As the day of the midterm exams drew near, Carol joined Tomo and Gundu in their study session at Gundu's house. The three of them focused their efforts on mastering mathematics, with Gundu leading the way. To their surprise, they discovered Carol's incredible talent for solving complex problems with ease. However, Gundu reminded them that the process was just as important as the answer, and that they wouldn't receive any marks if they couldn't show their work. Despite the challenges, 
the three of them studied hard and put in their best effort. When the test results were announced, Tomo was overjoyed to find that she had scored a 70, while Ju received a 54 spot, and Gundu received a second spot, but everyone gets shocked as Carol revealed to be the first position holder. On the day of Tomo's birthday, June was ready to escort her to school. But before they left, he had a special surprise for her a pair of stylish sunglasses she had been eyeing lately. Tomo was overjoyed with the gift and couldn't wait to show it off to her friend, Gundu. However, Gundu's reaction wasn't quite what Tomo had hoped for it only served to annoy her. Gundu, not wanting to be outdone, had her own birthday present to give to Tomo. It was a reference book, a practical yet thoughtful gift. Just when they thought the surprises were over, Carol burst onto the scene, struggling under the weight of a heavy object. It turned out to be a golden brick. Tomo was in disbelief. This was too much for a birthday gift. Carol reassured her, explaining that she had an even bigger golden brick back at her home and that this was just a small token of their friendship. Gundu and Carol then invited Tomo to spend the following Saturday at Gundu's house for a girl's day out. That weekend, the three friends had a blast as Gundu and Carol gave Tomo a complete makeover, transforming her into a fashionable young woman. They then playfully forced her to run an errand for them to buy ice cream. When Tomo made her way to the local supermarket, she was taken aback to come face to face with June. Despite their close resemblance, June seemed not to recognize her and instead acted as if he had never seen her before. Tomo, feeling flustered, quickly gathered her purchases and tried to make a hasty exit, but her feet had other plans. She tripped and tumbled to the ground, her face taking the full impact. Just as she was starting to feel embarrassed and hopeless, June appeared by her side, offering his hand to help her up. To Tomo's surprise, June agreed to walk her home. Along the way, they stumbled upon a group of children playing a lively game of football. The sight sparked something in Tomo, and she couldn't resist joining in on the fun. As Tomo and June sit quietly and watch the kids play, they take note of a young boy and girl, beaming with joy as they celebrate a goal together. June turns to Tomo, still unaware of her true identity, and wonders what the future holds for the young couple. Tomo, feeling a flicker of familiarity in the moment, shares her thoughts that the two kids could end up as a romantic couple when they grow older. This prompts June to confide in Tomo that he too has a special connection with a girl at school, but has yet to decide on their future. However, Tomo holds her tongue, not wanting to reveal her true identity to June just yet. As they both observe the melting ice cream, Tomo quietly excuses herself and rushes back to Gundu's house. The annual school sports tournament was fast approaching, and all eyes were on Tomo, who was known for her unmatched athletic abilities. Despite her impressive skills, the girl's team was wary of her power, and Tomo found herself rejected from their roster. But things took a surprising turn when the girl's coach drafted Tomo into boys' team, much to Tomo's disbelief. Meanwhile, June was ecstatic about the prospect of playing alongside Tomo. The day of the boys' dodgeball tournament arrives, and Tomo's team is eager to take the court. As they prepare to play their first game, they soon realize that their opponents are none other than the infamous gang they once defeated in a school brawl. With Tomo leading the charge, the team effortlessly dominates their opponents, effortlessly cruising to a resounding victory in their first match. The second round proves to be just as effortless, as they cruise to another dominant win. Tomo's team was faced with a daunting challenge in the second round, as they faced off against Misaki's squad. Misaki, being the caring captain he was, reminded his players to prioritize their safety and well-being. However, despite his efforts, 
Tomo and June proved to be too much for Misaki's team to handle, leading to a one-sided match and even resulting in Misaki himself getting hit hard by a throw from June. The final round approached, and Tomo's team was now faced with the daunting task of taking on the school's strongest student, Goru, whose sheer size and power intimidated even the toughest of opponents. But Tomo and June were determined to give it their all, even if it meant battling against a seemingly unbeatable foe. When the game is finally played, Goru slowly eliminates everyone until he decides to target Tomo. But just before a high-speed throw is about to hit her, June jumps in front, takes the throw on his back instead of Tomo, and gets eliminated instead. Angered, Tomo then puts all her strength to throw the ball at Goru, who is ready for any situation. But he does not realize that it's a trick throw. The ball goes between his legs and ends up in Tatsumi's hand, who then eliminates Goru. The combined team of Tomo and June declared as the winner, and the winner of the Boys Dodgeball Tournament. As the victors of the Boys Dodgeball Tournament, Tomo and June basked in their triumph. However, Goru wasn't satisfied, and he approached June, challenging him to a game of wrestling. Despite Goru's proficiency in judo, Jun's mastery of karate was too much for him to handle, and he was easily overpowered and brought down. Jun calmly explained that Goru's tendency to let his guard down was his downfall. As the intense grappling match between Jun and Goru continued, Jun came to the realization that Goru's strength was unmatched. Despite this, Goru showered Jun with praise for pushing him to his limits even though Jun never relied on his karate techniques during the fight. In Goru's eyes, Jun was the true winner of the match. He couldn't help but wonder why Jun shied away from participating in any other sports competitions where he could showcase his remarkable fighting skills. To Goru, it seemed like a waste of Jun's immense talent. As he thinks about his motivation to start learning to fight, Jun feels that he just wanted to catch up to Tomo, whose big back intimidated him since they were kids. But he does recognize that time has changed now although has no idea how to truly deal with the situation. When he later walks back home with Tomo, June realizes that he is still the gamer he once used to be and has only become strong-willed thanks to the presence of Tomo in his life. Starts with June doing his usually morning walk. He reached near the temple with a lot of stare. He then thinks about Tomo's father, Goro, who asked him that why he wants to become a stronger. The scene then shifts back to his childhood, when Jun was very young, and moved from Tokyo to the small city where Tomo lived. He was playing video games on a console, when Tomo climbed up the exterior wall behind his lawn. As she jumped from the wall to his side, she asked Jun, Where did he come from? to which June tells her everything while playing videos games on his console. Tomo then gets quite excited when she learned that he came from Tokyo, a town with big buildings and robots. But when she saw that June is not paying any attention to her, she snatches his console and begins to play video games. Unfortunately, she ended up accidentally breaking it. Seeing this, June punched her in the face, knocking her down on the ground. Despite Jun punched her, but she regretted her actions and apologized profusely, asking him to punch her with a hundred more times. A few moments later, Tomo arrived with his father Goro, and he apologized to Jun on behalf of his daughter, telling him that he will pay for the damages that her daughter caused. Due to his large size and scary look, Jun gets horrified to see Goro. Suddenly, Akemi, the mother of Tomo, arrives on the scene and scolds both of them for treating their new neighbor harshly. Seeing her in angry mode, both of them hid behind June, trembling with fear. She then asked Tomo to apologize to June and make up with him. Hearing her mother's words, Tomo tells June that she is sorry for breaking his console, and since they are on the same age, she wants to be his friend. Hearing this, June agrees to her request, and from that day, they both begin to play with each other every day. 
After some time, while playing a video game on his console, Tomo asks him to come play with her instead of playing with video games, even calling him a gamer kid. Hearing this, June tells him not to call him with that name, to which Tomo tells him that he never calls her with her real name, but always saying, Hey you monkey and idiot. Hearing this, June apologizes to her for his behavior and calls her with her real name, to which she gets happy and blushed. The following day, Tomo introduces him to her friend, Gundu, and wants him to become friend with her too. Suddenly, Gundu comes to his face and tells him that he has the face of a bumpkin, to which June gets angry, and from that day, their rivalry gets started. Sometime later, the trio heads to a forest to catch some bugs. As they arrive at the stairs, which was shown in the opening scene, June gets horrified to see so many stairs and even has hard time walking on it. Suddenly, Gundu, carried by Tomo on her back, gives him the embarrassing face, causing June to get fired up and runs faster, reaching the upper area before them and declaring his victory against Gundu. But when she approaches him, he was exhausted and lying on the ground, to which she tells him with a smirk smile that in the end, the one still standing is the winner. After that, the trio begin catching some bugs, and June is amazed to catch one. As the time passes, June catches up to Tomo's craziness, and they get along better than ever. One day, when he was playing games on his console alone by the riverside, two bullies approached him, supposedly beat him up, and stole his console from him. When Tomo met him the following day, she asked him about bandages on his face, to which he lied to her about the incident, but she somehow figured out what had happened. At that evening, she got the console back from the bullies, and gives it back June, telling him that she found it lying on the ground. Seeing this, June grabs her from his collar and tells her that he is tired of always taking Tomo's help. He then refused to take the console back from her, and promised to take it back only when he became physically stronger than her. After nine years, Tomo is still playing with the console, and wondered why he never took it back, as he is far stronger than her now. One ordinary day, June goes to the beach with Misuzu, Tomo, and Carol unknowns of the fact that the short trip will change the way he looks at his childhood friend. Carol has put this idea in Misuzu's mind that taking both of them to the beach will be a great idea. After arriving at the beach, the three friends change into a swimsuit. While Misuzu and Carol are comfortable wearing the clothes, Tomo could not gather the courage to stand in front of June wearing a bikini. When she does not come out of the changing room, June enters and simply removes the hoodie she is wearing. He is shocked to see Tomo's surprisingly hot figure and instinctively becomes very shy. While Carol and Tomo then go to play in the water, June just sits back and watches with Misuzu, who is quietly noticing everything. When Tomo and Misuzu later drag him with them to the water, they do not realize that they are making June uncomfortable by being too physically close to him. June has never seen Tomo in a swimsuit, so watching her like that just changes his perspective in unthinkable ways. He becomes extra protective of her, so when boys approach her, he makes sure that he pushes them away. Meanwhile, Tomo also struggles to keep her jealousy in check when Carol gets too close to June in her swimsuit. When they are going back home, Misuzu is confident that June no longer sees Tomo only as a girl now, and will probably not treat her like his other male friends anymore. After Misuzu challenged Tomo to go see fireworks with June during the summer festival, she paid him a visit to discuss it further. June was only interested in knowing if they would be accompanied by anyone else, and when Tomo confirmed that it would just be the two of them, he agreed to go. On the day of the festival, Carol visited Misuzu's home and offered to take her to see the fireworks, despite Misaki already planning to attend with her. June anxiously waited for Tomo at the festival, and when she finally arrived, he was captivated by her beauty in a traditional kimono. While browsing through the local shops, the vendors failed to recognize Tomo, whom they previously feared due to her winning streak. One vendor even snapped a photo of her and sent it to others as a warning. Regrettably, 
the vendor's hope for a successful day is short-lived as Tomo effortlessly triumphs over every game she plays, acquiring several prizes along the way. As they wait for the fireworks display to begin, Tomo finds a moment to express her gratitude for June's presence, causing him to struggle to contain his emotions as he holds her hands. However, he promptly changes the subject and invites her to watch the fireworks with him. Under the sparkling lights of the night sky, Tomo senses that this may not be the ideal time to confess her feelings to June. Meanwhile, he is grappling with his complicated emotions towards his childhood friend. To gain better clarity and manage his feelings, June decides to keep some distance between them. Tomo grows restless and notices the change in his behavior. On her way home, Misuzu is confronted by the same group of guys that Tomo had previously beaten up. Initially trying to intimidate them, Misuzu quickly realizes that she's no match for them. Carol witnesses the altercation and tries to intervene, but Misuzu refuses to acknowledge her presence. Despite this, Carol uses a taser on one of the guys, and the two girls flee to a nearby abandoned factory. There, they call June for help and urge him not to bring Tomo along. But Tomo soon realizes something is amiss and forces June to come clean about the situation. With Tomo in tow, June and Misaki rush to help the girls. When the bullies catch up to them, Tomo takes charge and beats them up. Even June gets in on the action, but Tomo reminds him that this is her fight as the culprits targeted her friends. Therefore, he decides to leave them to Tomo to handle. As Misaki catches Carol changing clothes, he misunderstands the situation and becomes infuriated with the creepy seniors for crossing all lines. He's on the verge of killing them, when Carol and Misuzu rush in to clarify things. After beating up the bullies, Tomo heads back home while Misuzu takes the opportunity to threaten them. She reveals that Tomo is the only daughter of Goru, who runs the infamous Aizawa Dojo. Misuzu warns them that if they continue to create problems for Tomo, things could get ugly. Learning about Tomo's father, the creepy seniors become scared and vow to protect her and Misuzu from now on. As Tomo is walking home, June joins her and mentions how she has smartly manipulated things. The next day, Tomo feels that she may have blown things with June by acting too savagely. But when June greets her normally, she's overjoyed and runs back to school, leaving June behind. Misaki, who used to be a miserable and unfriendly child, admits that he was unsociable and did not have any friends. In one instance, Misaki's mother, Mrs. Misaki, informs him that his cousin Carol has come to visit him, but Misaki initially refuses to meet her. However, when Carol enters the room, Misaki is captivated by her charm and sees her as an angel. In the present day, Misaki becomes a member of the Ikawa Dojo and is welcomed by its master, Goro, as well as Tomo and Jun who are watching closely. At first, Goro sees Misaki as weak, but upon looking into his eyes, he senses an evil presence within him and advises him to be careful. Misaki undergoes two intense training sessions that completely exhaust him, but he persists. Afterwards, Misaki faces Jun in a fight and infuriates him by asking if Tomo would acknowledge him if he wins. In an attempt to prove himself to Tomo, Misaki throws a punch at Jun, but he counters it and immobilizes Misaki with shock. Jun offers Misaki valuable advice, but Misaki, still driven to impress Tomo, throws another punch with all his heart, cutting Jun's cheek. Jun retaliates with a counterpunch that knocks Misaki unconscious. After regaining consciousness, Misaki finds himself lying on Tomo's bed and learns about the events that unfolded while he was unconscious. Tomo curiously asks Misaki about his newfound desire to become stronger, which Misaki admits is driven by his feelings for Carol. Despite his self-doubt, Tomo encourages Misaki to not be so downcast. Meanwhile, unbeknownst to them, Jun overhears their conversation from outside the bedroom. The next day, Misaki walks to school with Carol, who compliments his recent display of masculinity. Misaki confesses his admiration for Tomo, which visibly upsets Carol. Later, 
Carol approaches June in his classroom and expresses her desire to spend time with him, but June is disinterested. Carol admits her feelings for him, but as she leaves the classroom, Gunda confronts her about meddling with June. Carol rebuffs Gunda's accusation, leaving her at a loss for words. After some time had passed, June and Carol found themselves sitting on a bench in a park, watching people play. June expressed his belief that it was a pointless activity. Carol then revealed that she had been mean to Gunda earlier and had done something to Tomo, causing her to think that her relationship with them was irreparably damaged. June downplayed the part about Tomo and allowed Carol to stay with him for longer. Later, Carol visited June's room and declared that she was there to torture him. She then kissed June's cheek and, in a moment of vulnerability, climbed on top of him and teased him that Tomo wouldn't like him because of his weak nature towards women. Disconcerted, June abruptly left and went to Tomo's house, where he hugged her when she answered the door. June apologized for his behavior, and Tomo assumed that someone had beaten him up, which June inwardly admitted was because he didn't see Tomo as a girl. Both Tomo and June were surprised by Carol's sudden appearance, and she left after saying hello and formally apologizing. On the following day, Carol formally apologizes to Gundu for her actions on the rooftop, but Gundu brushes it off. Gundu offers to mediate between Misaki and Carol. In their conversation, Gundu interrogates Misaki about his feelings for Carol, which makes him feel uncomfortable. Nevertheless, Gundu is adamant that Misaki has feelings for Carol and encourages him to be honest. Misaki admits his inferiority complex and his interest in Carol. Gundu then proposes a plan to emotionally distress Carol so that Misaki can comfort and confess his feelings to her. After this, Gundu informs Carol that she has no chance with Misaki since he doesn't see her as a girl, causing Carol to leave school abruptly. Later on, Misaki pays a visit to Carol's house and is immediately headbutted by her mother Ferris upon arrival. After the initial encounter, Ferris allows Misaki to visit Carol in her room, where he finds her sobbing. Carol lashes out at him with her pillow, frustrated that Gundu had lied about Misaki's true feelings toward her. Misaki apologizes and admits his love for Carol, which pleases her greatly. In turn, Carol confesses her love for Misaki and explains that it's because of all the kind things he's done for her throughout their lives. Just as they are about to kiss and embrace, Ferris suddenly appears and puts an end to things. In another room, Ferris confides in Misaki, revealing that she always told Carol to smile because it would make her cuter. Ferris also expresses her fear that love can change a person, but Misaki reassures her that Carol has good friends who will help her stay true to herself. The following day at school, Carol shows up wearing a pink rabbit mask, much to the surprise of Tomo and Gundu. She approaches Gundu, takes off her mask, and claims victory before kissing her on the cheek. As their classmates gather outside, Tomo and June are excited for their school's annual marathon. They brag about their rigorous training and June suggests a bet, whoever loses owes the winner a week's worth of juice, which Tomo accepts. Meanwhile, Gundu and Carol chat while Tatuzmi vies for Gundu's attention, only to be ignored. When PE teacher Haneo starts the marathon, he urges Carol and Gundu to run rather than walk. As Tomo and June run on the track, Tomo mentions that she hasn't seen June lately, assuming he's been training for the marathon. They debate on who will win and lose, but their conversation is cut short when Haneo passes them on a scooter. Infuriated, they chase after him. As they approach the girl's turning point, June's excitement wanes, but Tomo doesn't seem to care, as she is more interested in competing with June. June has no choice but to agree with her. Further along the tracks, Misaki is jogging alongside some classmates and is pleased with his newfound strength. However, his sense of pride quickly dissipates as Tomo and June sprint past them, having already completed the turning point. As June and Tomo continue to race ahead, Tomo suddenly collapses on the ground due to a high fever, leaving June to come to her aid. After learning that Tomo had been practicing for the marathon late at night, 
Jun carries her on his back all the way back to school. Tomo wakes up in the school infirmary with Carol sleeping beside her and Gundu explaining that she has caught a cold. Jun then appears with Tomo's things, and Gundu suggests that Tomo take advantage of her situation before leaving with Carol. In a private moment, Jun hands Tomo a bottle of water and they chat briefly. As Jun announces his mother's pickup time, Tomo surprises him by asking to be carried to her mother's car. Despite feeling pressured, Jun agrees and carries Tomo to her mom's car. However, their peaceful moment is interrupted when Tomo's father Goro arrives, holding leaks in each hand, and frantically asks Jun where Tomo is. Jun points them in the direction they went, and Goro hurries after them. The next day, Jun visits Tomo in her room, where she has already fully recovered. Tomo thanks Jun for his help and returns his handheld game console to him. A flashback shows how Jun had once defeated Tomo in her father's dojo lesson, though she brushes it off. Goro comments that Tomo has a natural talent in sports, but not in martial arts. As Jun walks down the hallway on his first day of middle school, he expects to see his childhood friend Tomo in a boy's uniform, but she surprises him by appearing in a girl's uniform. Later on, Tomo shares this encounter with Gundu, while Jun reflects on his relationship with Tomo in his classroom. Suddenly, a student asks Jun if he is dating Tomo, which shocks him. He attempts to visit Tomo in her classroom, but overhears two female students asking her if she is dating Jun Tomo denies it, explaining that Jun doesn't see her as a girl. This statement hurts Jun's feelings and causes him to ignore Tomo when he sees her talking to male students. As time passes, their friendship deteriorates, and Jun never apologizes for his behavior. Gundo also begins to distance herself from Tomo, believing that she is too strong for her to hang around. While sitting on a bench, Jun has an epiphany that he should find a girlfriend to reconnect with Tomo. As he contemplates this idea, Gundu appears and sits beside him. After a conversation with Gundu, Jun realizes that he needs to reconcile with Tomo. Gundu agrees and encourages him to stop feeling sorry for himself. In a sudden move, Jun asks Gundu to be his girlfriend, and she accepts. On their walk home, they discuss their new relationship and acknowledge that it was born out of convenience rather than genuine affection. Gundu proposes holding hands, which excites Jun, but he becomes anxious when his palms start to sweat. As they say their goodbyes, Gundu insists that Jun call her by her first name. Both of them contemplate the nature of their relationship when they are alone. Jun takes Gundu on a few dates in the following days, but she ends up exhausted by the end of each one. The following day, Tomo notices that Gundu appears tired and approaches her to ask what's wrong. Gundu apologizes and explains that she can no longer continue their friendship. Tomo is taken aback and takes Gundu outside for a heart-to-heart -heart talk. Gundu confesses to feeling inadequate because she cannot participate in sports with Tomo, but Tomo reassures her that their friendship is not based on such things. They reconcile and plan to hang out that afternoon. However, when Gundu intends to break up with Jun, he ends up breaking up with her instead. Later, Jun catches up with Tomo at the shoe locker area and asks if they can walk home together. As they walk, Jun is lost in thought and ignores Tomo when she calls out to him. In response, Tomo punches him in the face. Tomo questions Jun about why he wanted to talk to her after ignoring her for a year. As he tries to explain, Jun notices Tomo crying and gets punched in the stomach. He finally admits that he ignored her because people thought they were in a relationship and he didn't want to complicate her life. However, Tomo tells Jun that it doesn't matter and asks what he wants to do now. Jun excitedly suggests continuing their relationship as it was before, but Tomo only agrees to be friends. Jun happily places his hand over her shoulder, and in the present, he realizes how cute she is to him. Tomo is eager to buy a birthday present for her friend Jun and decides to get a part-time job to earn some extra money. She confides in Gundo, who offers to accompany her, and Carol also volunteers to help out. 
While they are discussing their plans, Tatsumi happens to overhear and offers them all jobs at his parents' restaurant. After school, Tatsumi takes the girls to his family's establishment, the god Ramen Tatsumi, where they are greeted by Tatsuro, Tatsumi's father. He expresses gratitude for their willingness to work at the restaurant, as Tatsumi's mother Kiyomi is away visiting relatives. Later, Tomo and Carol are surprised to find themselves dressed in maid outfits while Gundo wears a regular ramen shop uniform. Gundo impresses everyone by competently handling her job, while Carol struggles and is eventually assigned to work outside. After some time, June arrives at the ramen shop and is taken aback to see Tomo working there. Gundo escorts him to his seat, while Tomo is completely surprised to see him. Tatsumi, noticing June's arrival, reveals to Tomo that he is a regular visitor at the shop, infuriating Tomo for keeping this a secret from her. Gundo tries to lighten the mood by asking June about Tomo's outfit, but his response leaves her confused. Later on, Tomo serves June his order and asks him if he finds her outfit amusing, but he compliments her instead, much to her surprise. Before leaving, June asks Tomo about her work schedule, and she informs him that she will be working until the weekend. June promises to come back the next day, and after he leaves, Carol manages to attract many new customers to the shop. After three days of working at the ramen shop, the girls collect their pay and exit the restaurant where they encountered June waiting outside. Tomo and June then walk home together and have a conversation about Tomo's experience working at the shop. On June's birthday, Tomo gives him a digital watch and a cake, while also suggesting they have a party at his house later. However, June informs her that his mother will be home late, and they opt to hold it at Tomo's place instead. During a serious conversation with Gundo, Tomo expresses her concern about how June sees her. Gundo suggests that Tomo let June touch her chest to show him that she's a woman. Although hesitant, Tomo agrees to the plan. Gundo sets up a situation where she pushes June from behind as he stands in front of a staircase, but he accidentally touches Carol's chest instead of Tomo's. Tomo becomes upset with June and agrees to beat him up as he requests. After the incident with June, Gundo is lost in thought and ends up tripping and falling down the stairway, landing on top of Tatsumi at the bottom. To his surprise, Gundo is kind and grateful towards him, offering to do something to make up for her mistake. Tatsumi takes this opportunity to ask for her contact information, which she willingly gives. Later, Carol asks Gundo about what happened, but Gundo expresses her regret for interfering with Tomo's feelings for June Carol consoles her and assures her that everything will be okay. The next day, it's raining heavily, and Tomo realizes that Gundo is absent from school due to sickness. Later that day, roles for the school play, Cinderella, are assigned for the upcoming culture festival. After three days of absence from school, Gundo lays in bed, feeling guilty for not facing Tomo. To her surprise, Tomo visits her and tries to have a heart-to-heart -heart conversation, but Gundo refuses to engage. As Tomo is about to leave, she hands over the script of the upcoming Cinderella school play for the culture festival. She tells Gundo that if she doesn't want to be friends anymore, she won't force it, but if that's not the case, she's overthinking things. Gundo reads the script and is astonished by what she finds. The next day, Gundo wears a mask and angrily questions why she was cast as Cinderella. A scared Tomo, holding on to Carol for support, explains the reason for her selection. June then arrives and teases Gundo about being cast as Cinderella, which causes them all to gang up on June. As the play's rehearsal continues, Gundo's gloomy disposition affects the group's mood. Seeking solace, she and Tomo go to the rooftop to practice their lines. There, Gundo ponders how her involvement with Tomo may have complicated her friendship with June and feels the need to fix it. During dress rehearsals, 
Tomo's costume draws attention from her female peers but encounters a wardrobe malfunction due to her chest. Meanwhile, Gundo catches the eye of male students with her outfit. Jun, standing beside Gundo in his tree costume, suggests that she talk to Tomo about her concerns, but Gundo playfully pushes him over. Later, as dusk falls, Tomo and Jun practice their roles at a nearby temple, with Tomo taking on the role of Prince and Jun playing Cinderella. Later on, Tomo, Gundo, and Carol's mothers arrive at the school's cultural festival to watch their daughters in Cinderella's play. They greet each other, but Tomo's mother is surprised to see Gundo's mother on the play. To which she revealed that Gundo lied to her that there won't be any cultural festival this year, and she's here take to revenge by filming it. The play starts and Tatsumi begins narrating the story of Cinderella. When the curtain pulls back, we see Gundo playing as a Cinderella for the first time. Carol also arrives, playing her evil stepmother character. As Gundo continue playing her character, we see June next to her, playing the character of a tree. Tomo's father, Goro, is also there, wearing a mask and rooting for her daughter. Suddenly, Tomo arrives dressed as a Prince Charming and proposed Gundo for a dance, who dressed as a beautiful Cinderella. As they both begin to dance, Gundo realizes that Tomo is Prince to the core, but June wants her to see as a princess. As Cinderella put her foot in the glass slipper, it fits her, and Prince Charming proposed her to marry him. Instead of anger, Cinderella's evil mother and everyone begins to congratulate her, shocking Tomo and Gundo. As the play comes to an end, it is revealed that it was Carol's idea to bring their friends close together. After the play, June asks Tomo to walk around the festival with him. They visit a cafe, walk through a haunted house, and play football games in the field. After that, they sit with each other and eat some food. Despite having fun, Tomo can't help but think about how all of this will end for them, and if this is the kind of future she wants from June. Suddenly, they see couples dancing around the fire, and June asks her to dance with him. Tomo agrees, but a lot of girls begins to cheer for her. Seeing this, Tomo tells him that asking her in front of all these people might give everyone the wrong idea about them since he only asked her as a friend. However, June immediately corrects her saying that people would not be getting the wrong idea about them. Before he can explain what he means, Tomo runs away. The next morning, Tomo approaches June with her usual greeting, hitting him on the back, but when he tries bring up their yesterday's conversation, she continues to run away. When Carol and Gundo inquires about what happened in the cultural festival between June and her, she also turns them down, continuing to run away. Seeing this, Gundo realizes that June must have confessed his feelings to her and she is trying to run away. After the school, Misaki meets June and they sat on the school park. June admits that he finally realized he has feelings for Tomo, and asks Misaki for a love advice. Feeling happy with this revelation, Misaki tells him that the best thing he can do is tell her straight up that he loves him. Hearing this, June visits Gundo and confesses to her that when they dated, he was not in love with him, because he is in love with Tomo and has been since their childhood. Later on, Tomo received a letter from someone, challenging her to a fight at the rooftop. When she arrives, she realizes that June tricked her into a meeting with him. He then asks her to hit him with a powerful punch, when asked why, June reveals that when she confessed her love for him at the beginning of the high school, he knows that she did not meant this as a friend's, but he continued to ignore despite know her true feelings for him. Hearing this, Tomo hits him a powerful punch, and begins to cry in front of him. As Tomo tries to leave, June yells out that he is in love with her, but she responds by calling him a dumbass before running away again. Tomo then visits Gundo and Carol, and reveal everything to them, but the both of encourages her and decides to hear June out. Tomo then meets June, 
who confesses his feelings to her again. Tomo feels happy that Jun finally loves her, but fears that they cannot be together and remain best friends. Hearing this, Jun tells her that he will love her more than anything, but this will not change anything, as their friendship will remain the same. Tomo apologizes to Jun for not being able to walk home with him that afternoon because she promised to walk home with Carol and Misuzu. To Misuzu and Carol's surprise, Jun takes it rather well and he tells them that he is not bothered because he knows that Tomo is a reliable person and that she would not break her promise to him. This prompts Misuzu and Carol to gang up on Jun, teasing him about being too understanding. Later, Tomo informs Misuzu and Carol about how Jun's personality has changed toward her since he now sees her as a girl. She confesses that she is annoyed by their new interactions because she had hoped to see him in a flustered state. Misuzu suggests that Tomo try kissing Jun, citing a romantic movie and noting that Christmas is just around the corner. Eventually, Tomo and Jun meet up, and Tomo's appearance makes Jun blush a little. However, Jun's compliment makes Tomo flush as well. The two then see a movie in which Misuzu suggests Tomo kiss Jun during it. However, when the time came for Tomo to kiss Jun, she was too flustered from the kiss scene in the movie. She was astonished at how well Jun took it, though. Jun and Tomo would later talk about their movie experience at a restaurant. There, Jun admits that he wasn't into romance movies before he fell in love with Tomo. He felt that he'd never relate to them. However, everything changed when he fell in love with Tomo. This revelation makes Tomo feel like total scum. They then exchange gifts where Jun gives Tomo a pair of earrings and Tomo gives Jun a handmade muffler. As they walk home together, Tomo thinks that she wants to shock Jun a little more. When Jun suggests they head home, Tomo insists that she'd like to head to Jun's home first. At Jun's home, inside Jun's room, they have a heart-to-heart -heart conversation where Tomo confesses that she'd hoped to kiss Jun that night, but wasn't able to because she didn't feel feminine enough. The confession makes Jun flustered and causes him to punch himself in the face. Jun then admits that although he has feelings for Tomo, her father Goro rejected his relationship proposal with Tomo, despite her mother Akemi accepting it. Goro's condition for accepting Tomo as his girlfriend is that Jun must defeat him in a fight. Goro and Akemi are discussing the matter when Tomo confronts her father in a fit of rage. She tells him that she hates him and storms off, leaving him speechless. The next day, Misuzu and Carol catch up at the temple shrine. At Tomo's house, Akemi informs Jun that Tomo doesn't want to see anyone, but suggests that he challenge Goro instead. Jun is depressed and declines. Later that day, Jun and Tomo talk in the school hallway about Goro's condition for them to be together. Jun confesses that defeating Goro has been his lifelong goal, which prompts Tomo to punch him in the face. In class the following day, Misuzu and Carol confront Tomo for ignoring them for the past two weeks. On the rooftop, Tomo explains the situation to them. After school, Jun announces to Tomo that he'll challenge Goro. He ambushes Goro in his dojo and nearly punches him. The two talk about their duel and Jun reveals that he brought Akemi for support, much to Goro's dismay. Meanwhile, during judo club, Tomo informs Kosuka about Jun's challenge to Goro. Kosuka confesses that he knows about Jun's desire to defeat Goro and suggests that Tomo support him. Tomo leaves early and runs past Misuzu and Carol, who quickly realize what's happening. At the dojo, Jun struggles against Goro. He is surprised when Tomo arrives and declares that she will defeat Goro if he cannot continue. Jun protests, but Tomo insists. Jun continues fighting Goro, analyzing his opponent's flaws and his thoughts about Tomo. He punches Goro in the face, but Goro refuses to admit defeat. Akemi slaps Goro on the head and tells him to knock it off. Goro finally admits defeat. Outside, Jun formally asks Tomo to start a relationship. Tomo is upset because she wanted to do that. In retaliation, she kisses Jun and proclaims that their interactions will make his heart race even more from now on. 
Smiling, June accepts the challenge, and Tomo hugs him. Like and comment if you enjoyed this video. Subscribe to my channel for more anime recaps, and tell me what anime recap you'd like to see next in the comments below.